Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Mac and Talk episode number 41 for Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. I'm your host, Chanel Allen. Mac and Talk is a Q&A conference call for anyone with Mac questions. Whether you are attempting to figure out if the Mac is even the right device for you, or you are just getting started out with voiceover and need some help and encouragement and tips, or maybe you are a longtime Mac user with some questions about an app or feature. For whatever reason, I am glad that you are joining us live now or later on via the podcast recording. Before we get to all of your awesome questions, though, we have a few announcements. Since iBug has about 21 training and social events throughout the month, the best way to keep up with all that is our website and social media. Our website, iBugToday.org, is a great place to register to become a member. That's free. You can register for free, participate in all of our events for free. And in addition to registering, you can look at the upcoming events. You can just learn more about us, who we are and what we do. And you can listen to previous workshops that have been recorded. Also, we have a link on our iBug site called Mac and Talk, and that's a great place to go if you either need to contact me or if you want to be part of our Mac and Talk email list, where we um, it's a great place to exchange information, ask questions about the Mac in between these calls. Okay, and moving on to social media. If you prefer to just uh, keep up to date with Facebook and Twitter, we've got you covered there. All of our announcements are posted to all of our social media. Our Facebook site, facebook.com slash groups slash iBugToday, is also a great way for people to interact in between our training events. On Twitter and Instagram, we are at iBugToday. And for Twitter, you can even go to twitter.com slash iBug today if you don't have Twitter, because it's an excellent source for Apple news. And not only that, but for how to guides in light of the recent Mac OS release, we may find some helpful tweets on there about how to get adjusted to all that. And if you like to, well, first we have a number of ways to listen to our previous workshops and training sessions, we are on YouTube. So if you love to use the YouTube app, you just need to look for iBug Today. We have a channel and we even have playlists on that channel. And one of those playlists is the lessons from the previous Mac course. You can also look for our iBug podcasts in your pod, uh, favorite podcasting app or even your smart speaker. We have iBug Buzz, iBug Apple Workshop, iBug Mac and Talk, and iBug Cafe. I just looked those up today, so that's four excellent podcasts in Apple Podcasts or your smart speaker or wherever you get them. All right, and so that is all for our social media. As far as the things coming up this week, on Thursday, we have It's iBug's Life. Why did the chicken cross the road? Well, to get away from the many ways we want to prepare it and cook it. I'm not quoting that joke exactly, but that is from 7 to 9 with our facilitator, George Batiste. On Friday, we have iBug Night at the Virtual Movies beginning at 7.30 with the pre-movie social followed by the movie at 8, which is Misery based on a Stephen King book. And... There are other events. Um, stay tuned for our Apple workshops, our iBug Cafe. Every Monday night, we do have the iBug Buzz from 7 to 9, which is a Q&A &A conference call for iPhone and iOS questions. Here we talk all about the Mac. On iBug Buzz, we talk all about the iPhones and the iDevices. And um, we also have events on Clubhouse on Tuesdays. The um, I think next Tuesday will be the iBug Mac Buzz, which is very similar to this call, and that is from 5 to 6. So that is a general overview. Be sure to go to our website and read up on all the details, but now we want to hear from you. So if you can just say your name, where you are calling from, and if this is your first time joining us for Mac and Talk. Janet Gold. Hi, Janet. Priscilla from Arlington. Priscilla, welcome back. Thank you, dear. Kathy Long from Pennsylvania. Hi, Kathy. Hey. Londa Peterson from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hello, Londa. 
This is Brad. I'm in Dallas. Hi, Brad. This is Judy from Connecticut. Great. Welcome, Judy. Mary Ward from Austin. It's Hi, not Mary. my first time. This is Jim from Massachusetts. Hi, Jim. First time. Oh, welcome. Julie from Pete. California. Welcome. Pete from Jacksonville. Hi, Pete. Hi. This is Darcy from Ontario, Canada. Hi, Darcy. Hi. Paul from Columbus, Ohio. Oh, welcome, Paul. Glad to have you. All right, anyone else? So Jim, do you mind, since you're a first time caller, uh, letting us know um, how you heard about iBug and about Mac and Talk? Uh, the, um, it was a tech, it was a, um, a technology email list. Oh, I'm probably on the same one. Okay. Uh, the tech, tech six. Yep. Tech BI. Yeah. Tech, David, David Goldfield. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Diane from California, also a first time person. Oh, yay. Hi, Diane. Welcome. Hi, thank you. And uh, did you also hear about us from that list? Um, someone, I think from behind our eyes, sent me a notice. Okay. And so, yeah. And so I got onto the email list and then found out about that through through the first email reply. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Great, we're glad to have you. <laughs> do you have a Mac? I do, and I've been having some troubles um, doing some copy and pasting of a Word manuscript into an email that an agent had requested. But I finally, after two weeks of troubleshooting, got that sorted out yesterday. So oh, good. I'm sure there will be other problems. Down the road. <laughs> well, not to put you on the spot, but since you are a new uh, new caller, we'll be happy to let you go first if you have a question. Also, Jim, did um, do you have a Mac? Forgot to ask you. Well, no matter if you have a Mac or not, we are happy that you are here. So I don't. Sorry think... about that, Chanel. I, oh, um, that's okay. I, I just, I, I mute when I'm not talking, I, I mute and I couldn't. Good. Find that's the, very good I Zoom etiquette. <laughs> couldn't find the, the button right away. Um, and I'm on my, I'm on my phone as opposed to my PC. So it wasn't as simple as a keystroke. Um, so here's the, so here's the thing. I actually just, I, I just had a, I recently had a job where I used a Mac for the first time with very little training. And okay. I, I will be honest, I struggled through it. Um, and I actually right now had to, because um, my, empl um, my employer uh, and I separated a couple of weeks ago, I had to give that back to my, that was a, that belonged, that, that computer belonged to my employer. But I am hoping to, um, basically turn my career into a, um, a different direction and start uh, testing uh, websites for accessibility for with screen readers and possibly even you know instruct you know at, at some point maybe even instructing others uh, you know giving people like helping people with their own computer skills so the long story short is um, I I think I want to um, learn more about it and, and know more about how I think I'll always be a Windows guy as far as my PC I am on an iPhone and I've used an iPhone for 10 years mm -hmm. so I wouldn't switch I would never I, would, I wouldn't think about leaving the iPhone I probably That's will great. remain a PC a PC guy on Windows but a Windows guy on P, on the PC however I would not I, I would not mind at some point when I am able again to purchase my own Mac and learn it well enough to Great. yeah so long story short <laughs> well we'll be happy to help you and encourage you along the way if you choose to do that it's always good to have multiple tools in the toolbox as some of us were talking about earlier so mm. yes all right so who would like to ask our first question tonight uh, 
Oh, well, this is Diane, I guess, since no one else is jumping. Okay, go ahead. You're go ahead. Uh, so uh, I sorted out my problem with the copy and paste, and using Mac Mail solved the problem beautifully. Oh, good. Um, and um, but my question is, I've noticed a lot of commands use a two or three or four key sequence. And they're often all with the left hand. And I'm finding that pretty clunky. And it, I'm just yeah. wondering, um, will this, will I get used to this? So I, you know, I'm used to being able to type, you know, very, very quickly. <laughs> right. right now, this is, uh, you know, of course, I'm still learning or just beginning to learn. And I mean, this is bringing me back to the 80s when I first used WordStar on a PC, you know? And um, So it, it, do you get fast with it? I mean, am I going to be able to, you know, uh, get so comfortable with it after lots and lots of practice that it's kind of not so obvious and clunky for me? It will get easier. I So let's um, turn that over to, uh, does anyone want to um, give Diane some helpful ways that, that, is, yeah, go ahead. Oh, this is Darcy. Darcy. Um, so if you're, the, the things I, I bet you're talking about in some respects are all the various voiceover commands. I, I actually, I shouldn't assume that. Are you, are you a voiceover user? Yes, yeah. I'm just beginning to use it. That's, okay. that's part of the problem, I think. Yeah, and it, it the know, first yeah. time I started using it, it, it seemed very, very uh, daunting as well with the control and option for everything. Um, one thing that might be easier for you, um, the things you can you can do, is you can change it so that instead of using control and option for the voiceover modifier, you use the caps lock key, and so that's right. like one fewer key to to right. uh, have to press. That might make things easier, and um, but then as far as, you know, the keys, the sort of non voiceover stuff they actually do get to be quite logical once you get used to them. Like, um, you know, in a lot of in a lot of respects, they're very similar to what you did on the PC, except a lot of times in the PC where they use control, the MX right. command, like command Z to, to undo, command X to cut, that sort of thing. Um, so that's are, what I'm finding, and it's and which I love that they kind of are consistent with those same commands. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it's like anything. It's like when you do anything new, you know, you don't have the muscle memory, right? I, I always call it muscle memory, mm -hmm. where like you can just do stuff without thinking about it to the point where it's like you have to if you have to tell someone what keys to press, you have to think about it for a second because you're just used <laughs> to doing it. And right, it's true. That will that will take time, um, but mm -hmm. it, it's the, the keys are are quite logical, um, mm -hmm. and you know there are things you can do. Like you can, one of the things that that's really cool is that in in the Mac, um, just about anything in an app that's on the menu bar that doesn't have mm -hmm. a shortcut key, you can actually you can actually assign a shortcut key, so you can mm -hmm. you can actually get you know really productive. Um, with with things you use all the time um yeah. so but but to answer your question though you you will get used to it it will like okay. I said, you might try the thing with the caps lock see if that works better for you um okay. and uh and go from there because it, it's yeah. just it's just a matter of just getting used to you know the, the different arrangement of things this is pete uh, i'm yeah, sorry just ahead, at, at some oh, oh. Sorry. No, go ahead. Diane. I want to say just at some point, could you explain how to create those shortcuts? But not now. Let Pete and everyone else go first. Okay. <laughs> Thank well, you. Want, you mentioned, Diane, that the um, they were predominantly, they seem to be predominantly on, based on your left hand, those uh, modifier keys and whatnot. Keep in mind that the the primary modifier keys command and option unless you switch to the caps lock <clears throat> are available on both sides of the keyboard for either hand as well. So I don't know if you were oh, limiting yourself are. unnecessarily. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The VO yeah. key, the command option keys are, you know, bottom right on your keyboard, just as they are on the, on the left, bottom left. And then now, the shift key is over there too. If, if there's a laptop though, there's no control on the right, right. side and ah, there are okay. such, there are certain situations where um, the option key, for example, 
can be like the right option and the left option can do different jobs. Um, you, it doesn't have to, but like, mm -hmm. um, if, you know, if you start doing things like getting into the voiceover, like the keyboard commander and stuff like that, you can set it to use a specific option key rather than just in general. So there are situations where that's the case, but you're right. Most of the commands, you know, outside of voiceover, most of the time you're going to use, either use command or option. Occasionally you use control. So you, you can do some of that stuff with, with your right hand. Mm. This is Brad. Yes, Brad. Um, Diana, I'm not sure. What kind of Mac are you using? I believe Pete mentioned the uh, uh, magic I'm using keyboard. An so iMac. it sounds so it, an iMac. Okay. An okay. IMac. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you are using what the uh, magic keyboard? And um, I heard you. Um, it, I, you have switched a controller. The, I switched the keyboard um, to one that's plugged in. And the okay. mouse, my magic mouse died. And <laughs> so, are you so, using an, an Apple keyboard or is it a? Yes. Well, okay. Well, one thing you might consider um, by default, uh, the F keys on a Mac work hardware functions. For example, um, even though it may not matter, uh, F1 and F2 will make the screen brighter or dimmer. Uh, if it's you're on a laptop, F5 and 6 make the backlit keyboard brighter or dimmer. And your F7, mm. 8, and 9 are media keys. Well, there is a... And then if you want to use the F keys as regular F keys, you hold down the FN key, which if you're using the wired USB keyboard, that's kind of in the extended key area in an unnatural position to be mm. using a VO modifier and press that FN key because a number of voiceover commands use F keys, F1, F2, and so on and so forth. If you go into your system preferences, which is changing to settings, but I'm sure we'll mm -hmm. talk about that eventually, and find your keyboard preferences, there is a checkbox to change the behavior of your F keys so oh. that you can have them be standard F keys by default instead of hardware keys. I know that I have done that because I tend to use the voice, the F keys for voiceover functions much more than I do for hardware functions. And if I need to do a hardware function, I can always hold down the FN key to do so. So that's something you might consider is reversing the behavior of the F keys. Thank you. That yes, and thank you. Yes. Um, and I also, I, when you mentioned the left hand and how to, so one thing I love about my magic keyboard, I have the full size Apple magic keyboard with numeric keypad is that mm -hmm. I have command option and control keys on both sides of the space bar on a typical laptop, as they were saying, you only have, um, the control key to the left of the space bar, but on mm -hmm. a full size keyboard, it is to the right of the space bar as and well. And that's where I was speaking from as well, Chanel. Yeah. Right, right. Well, yeah, that's you very mentioned helpful. command and, and option, right. they but are there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's so those are things, some things for you to um, think about. And I hope that helps and keep coming Absolutely. back with your questions. Thank you, everyone. I'm going Great. to sign off now. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Well, feel free to stay or keep listening or whatever. So, all right. Who would like to ask our next question? This is Brad. Yeah, Brad. I'm just wondering if anyone has updated to macOS Ventura oh, and yes. what you missed... are your th thoughts? I know I have yet to do it. I usually wait a few days okay. before doing it, but gather more information. But I'm just wondering if uh, anyone, perhaps Darcy or any of our uh, um, new users perhaps made the plunge. Yeah, anyone here? We were having a bit of a conversation about it before the call officially started. So who would like to give Brad no review? Thoughts on it? Uh, Darcy, I actually have not updated yet either. I was I had to do some Zoom stuff today, so I figured this probably <laughs> wouldn't be a good day to do it. Um, but I'm going to do it tomorrow. The one thing I have heard, because Holly updated, and she only just started using it, but she did say, 
that voiceover feels a lot faster, like more responsive. So that that's that's exciting. This is Mary. This is, yeah, oh, Mary. Right, um, I upgraded last night, and um, I had kind of a weird problem that my computer has done to me a couple of times. But anyway, it came up talking a lot faster. Um, the voices sound a little funky, but it is more responsive. So um, I guess it's a trade-off. You get a little bit of funk versus um, mm -hmm. a lot more responsiveness. And I thought that more responsiveness was something that the Mac, the voices could really use. So um, the system preferences isn't system preferences anymore. It's a little bit different, but um, it's not, you know, it has a different name and the structure is a little different, but not, not that big of a deal. You can find everything you need. This is Pete. Yes, Pete. I'm curious, what are the, what do they call, do they call it settings? System settings. Yeah. System OS. <laughs> they wouldn't go all the way to iOS. Huh? <laughs> I have a question on that. Sure. Is, is, is the, is the feel of system is does it still have like the feel of system preferences if that makes any sense of of you know your interact well you don't necessarily have to interact in system preferences if you use command j but does it have that same feel where you're kind of interacting non-interacting to deal with the um uh, the different areas it does so you kind of it's almost like being in the finder sidebar in a sense or any area where you have you have your preference panes that are um or your different categories that are like in a sidebar and you choose one of them with vo space and then you uninteract and then once you vo write you will see those options pertaining to what you selected um there are a couple things in different places like you have this thing called login items now under general your startup disk is under general. You also have like a erase this mask. There's a couple different things. Things are maybe positioned differently to adjust the um, time announcement. That's in control center, although my time announcement doesn't work. So um, there's there's a couple of different things, but it's not it's it's not fundamentally different. This is Darcy. Yeah, Darcy. From your description, it kind of sounds like how the settings work on the ipad that with on the ipad you have this the sidebar thing and selecting that opens up the thing on the other side so i wonder if it's similar to that i think it is i i would say it is i think if it's like i i like to usually with a new os update um i like to just really go through like in the past it was system preferences now to be system settings mm -hmm. and just really go through and kind of get the sense of where everything is and this this sounds like now more than ever might be a good day to do like if you just set some time aside and just kind of poke around through everything and just see where everything everything lives now yep i, th I think that i think that's a necessary thing with this iteration yeah. I, don't, I don't you know i don't even think you can kind of let go of that just because things have moved in some instances I wonder, and I don't know if you know this or not, Chanel. Um, I wonder if the the various shortcut keys to jump to certain things are still there. Like you could do the option, you know, volume buttons to jump right to the sound preferences. Oh, and I wonder if that's still a was thing. Saying that wasn't working anymore. Oh, really? Um, that because that was so useful. Like if you have to change your actually, inputs and outputs and all that. Well, I, I just tried that. It just worked for me. Um, oh. <laughs> just as we were speaking, I, yeah, I did option F or function and then the F 11 and that went to the, the sound. Um, cool. You, the sound, the sound effects are all in kind of the same areas that there's no separate sound effects tab. Um, as Herbie was, oh, so there's just some different, some differences, but um one thing that's kind of annoying is every time I start my Mac, I get this system events has added blah, blah, blah to startup or login. Um, and, you know, for the speech or, yeah, pretty much I've the speech. I've heard a lot it, of people complaining about that on Twitter. It's, it's, I think it's to do with your startup items. 
Right. Like items you have starting up, but then that's probably going to confuse a lot of people if they don't know. It is. And I even went into my login items and there were things in there that I hadn't even like VMware Fusion. I, I uninstalled that a while ago, but, um, the, you know, so you can look more at what's in your login items and what background notification or background things. Um, but the notifications still want to appear, even if you do take a look at all that. So yeah, that's better too, because there are sometimes, because there are a bunch of, in the past, there are a bunch of different ways apps can come on at startup. And some of them, like you had your user, you know, under users and right. your login items in there, but then apps could start up in other ways and they weren't necessarily there. So I think this, this new way you can see everything and you can, you can, and so, you really and, can. And I don't know about VMware, but sometimes apps, you know, when you uninstall them, they don't always go away all the way. So no, there might be they could something. be in a million different places, yep. other places. <laughs> yeah. Like in libraries or whatever. Mm -hmm. I know we're probably getting way ahead over, um, but I um, hope that helps a little bit. Um, does anyone else have any comments about what you like, don't like, um, what you're not looking forward to, all that good stuff? All right, well, who would like to ask our next question? Brad, I'm sorry, you weren't asking me something. I had to mute. I was being asked another question. I know how that goes. Was... No, we, we okay, weren't. Okay, good. At... I don't know if I missed anything. You No, we were just... Okay, um... Headphone off one ear and microphone was muted. So I could oh, I get it. answer a domestic question. <laughs> this is diane i have other questions if no one else does okay, go ahead. i don't want to monopolize sure. the time no go ahead um i am mostly interested because as i said i'm just getting started with voiceover and so my primary uses are initially uh using microsoft word and doing text editing uh, you know, because I do a lot of revision of my work before I submit. And then also email, uh, which now I have a new email, the Apple Mail I need to get familiar with, uh, which I don't think will be too big of a problem. But I'm just wondering what beginner resources would you recommend? Is there something that is very specific to Microsoft Word, for instance, um, using voiceover for uh, creating documents and revising them and what have you? Is there a specific YouTube video or some kind of tutorial that you might recommend for that? This is Brad. Yes, Brad. Well, I don't know about uh, YouTube or other tutorials, but if you are experienced using Microsoft Word, <clears throat> in some ways, it's like Mac, Mac things didn't really have a certain characteristic way in which they do things. And Windows things have a characteristic way in which they do things. And mm -hmm. Microsoft Word seems to have a little bit of both. Um, <clears throat> it is one of the, it, 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 some of its keyboard commands are very similar to what you would use in a Windows environment. But it does some things a Mac way too. I find it's more like a Windows app than lots of the other standard Mac apps, like the text <laughs> edit app or or editing <laughs> in email with the mail app. There are some um, ways you do things that are the Mac way, whereas in mm -hmm. Microsoft Word, it tends to be a lot like Windows. Um, it came out on Windows before it was Mac. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Um, it act and actually, uh, people don't realize this. It was the ver very first non Apple uh, application to run on a Mac back in. Uh, I don't know if it was in. It, it was in the eighties, but the Mac hadn't been out that long before mm -hmm. Microsoft made Word, and I don't know about Excel, but Word available on a Mac. But <clears throat> where I'm going with is. Uh, you will find there is a ribbon interface, but I don't find it useful, um, very useful like it is on 
on the Windows side. It's not really keyboard command, you know, or they call them in, in the Windows side uh, uh, key tips, short, you know, keyboard command. But you do get with well, the thing I love about the Mac is the menu bar. The menu bar is present in every application. And mm -hmm. you can go through the menu bar. And as you are learning the Mac in all apps, if you go through the menu bar, you will find that it helps you out with, tells you keyboard commands for many of the, um, many of the other, uh, many of the uh, commands you find in the various menus. Uh, so be sure to explore that. You will also mm -hmm. find that when it comes to navigating, um, you will use um, the command key instead of the control key. But um, beginning of the line, end of the line is home and end, just like on Windows. Command home will take you to the beginning of a document. Command end to the end of the document. That's, those commands are a little different from the way it's done in other Mac apps or the way you'll find it done in the Mac mail app. But mm -hmm. uh, play around with it, and um, you may find it's more familiar than than you would have expected, and you may find some things are different as well. So okay. play around with it. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have any um, comments or feedback? Well, this is Mary. It's kind of a question since Brad seemed to use that a, a lot. The thing that I noticed last time I tried to use Word, a couple of things. One was that um, it didn't seem to want to just let me use the up and down arrow to move my line. It was jumping to the top of the document. And I had to go into quick nav to be able to, you know, and then go to line and then go back out to edit. Is it not having that problem anymore? And the other thing I noticed was it seemed like I had to interact a bunch of times to get into the, like, wants to get into the document. And I think I had to interact again to go to each page. Um, is that true or is that just what it seemed this like is Brad. as a new user? Yeah, Brad, go ahead. Yeah, that has been my experience too. That's a very Mac thing. You certainly don't have that in Windows, but yes, you interact with the document and then you may need to interact with <clears throat> a page to navigate around it. Now I find that when I'm writing, it will go from one page to the next. It, <clears throat> makes a little sound it's certainly not as um shall i use the word smooth and experienced as it is on windows it's different for sure but once i started using it um i got used to it pretty quick and i found it very usable um um you know a lot of people like pages and on on a Mac and Pages is a very nice app. My problem with Pages is that um, it doesn't allow you to work in a Microsoft Office file format such as Word as a DOC or DOCX. You can mm -hmm. export your final product project, your final product to uh, a DOC or DOCX format. But if you're working with other people. <clears throat> and you're emailing a document to someone and someone emails you a document. If you're going to open it in pages, it goes through a conversion process. And when things go through a conversion, um, fonts get changed uh, and certain other page attributes may, you know, go through a transfer process and things happen when, when they go through a transfer process. So I have found that just the majority of the world is using a Microsoft Office file format that using Word on a Mac, to me, is a less problematic experience than having to convert things every, you know, repeatedly. Mm. Import and export. It's, uh, you know. It really, I think, depends on, so I, most of the time on the Mac, am just fine with using text edit because what's great about text edit, and we'll talk about this in our class too, is you can save to dot .doc and dot .docs um, and, and you, or as well as just work in plain text. So it's pretty versatile. It's not, if you want to apply different types of styles, like heading levels and things, it's not the greatest, but 
TextEdit is just a great way to get used to navigating around in text on the Mac. Then once you've done that, you've practiced moving from, you know, line to line, paragraph to paragraph, um, from the top of a document to the bottom, you've practiced selecting text, you've pra then you'll have an easier time. Um, you can even apply fonts and formatting. So, you know, get um, like the, you know, you can make the font bigger, choose a different style. Um, you can do a bunch of different things. You can uh, practice spell check. So there's a number of things you can do with text edit. Then once you've gotten really comfortable with that, maybe go on to pages or word. Um, hmm. And so yeah. I think that's really that's a great tip. Yeah. yeah, this is Brad. I agree with Chanel. And plus you were by using text edit. I mean, most of the time I'm not doing things that are very elaborate, no, elaborated either. in um, fancy, better word in, um, you know, word. So I mean, I use text edit a lot and I save in a DOCX format. So I'm not having to go through a conversion process generally sometimes the font one of the default fonts over on word times new roman or arial i don't believe exists in um um text edit but times things new convert. roman does times new roman does okay but yeah. Helve arial and helvetica <clears throat> are pretty trans um you know they're pretty equivalent to each other but um the nice thing about text edit is you will also it's pure mac so you will learn yep the Mac way of navigating a document. It does not have one foot in the, in the windows world and one foot in the Mac world. It's pure Mac. So, and that will help you learn to use the, ma the mail editor in the app, Apple mail app on the Mac. Very as true. Well. Yep. Oh, good. Yeah. That's always, and that's what we do in the class is cover text edit. And once you, I mean, and, um, I know in Word that if you're able to, so some of those bugs where it was not letting you navigate by line or sentence have been worked out. I know there was like a, a status bar or something that once you collapse, um, it let me, because I was actually playing in Word on Mac a few weeks ago, and it seemed there was a bit of jumpiness, you know, moving from page to page, like yes. we always have. But <laughs> otherwise, it was working fine. Um, I was able to go down line by line. But, you know, maybe that's because Word has made some updates recently. I don't know. Um, but, yep, text editing is you just learn what, as with anything, learn what works and what doesn't and the strengths and weaknesses of each. Uh, Diane again. Yeah, um, Diane. I just wanted to throw in that um, when I was giving feedback to Microsoft on Seeing AI, which I love because I was able to program my own shortcuts to say, you know, what is this? And it automatically right. goes to the barcode and everything. Um, so I added in there that the more they could do that was voice activated, that would be hugely welcome, especially a word processor that would be voice activated, you know, to mm. say open and give a file name, and then also to be able to edit the document just with voice commands. And he said he would pass it on to their technology people. I don't know if that ever happened or whatever happened, but I've also been talking to people who are interning there at, at Microsoft and trying to just get that message out there. So I don't know if any of you are connected to the Microsoft people or the development people, but um, I would love a voice activated text editor. <laughs> so there is, I mean, you can't, so that would kind of drive me crazy, but there are, the, <laughs> um, but you can use dictation on the Mac. There, right. there is also something called voice control, which is kind of more for people with, um, who maybe aren't able to use the keyboard at all. It kind of works with voiceover, um, but it, you can, you know, go into your, I think if you press the FN key twice, that is a default behavior. You can start uh, dictating and I mean, that won't let you, unless you turn on voice control, you know, you wouldn't be able to do things like um, open, say open word or open whatever, mm -hmm. but um I think Dictation it's the editing. Exist. It's the editing feature. It's to have them read a sentence and then replace a word or a phrase. 
um, that kind of thing would be um, just, I think editing is very, still pretty difficult. Um, well, I'm finding it difficult, but again, I'm just beginning. So maybe <laughs> You'll get, just, it'll get easier. I'll get there. Pete, Go ahead, Pete. Go ahead. I was just curious, Diane, may I ask, are you an author? Um, y yes, but I had just become an author when I lost my eyesight. So I'm, I, although I did just send a manuscript off Sunday yeah. night, uh, to an agent and, um, I'm trying to get back, back in, um, it's taken me, you know, I took a couple of years off because I had to sort out this whole blindness thing. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, it does a little bit. I know. It's funny how it does it. So, um, yeah, so I write children's uh, and I have an inspirational piece, too. And I'm also an artist, uh, mosaic and, uh, and acrylic, uh, fluid acrylics. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the, there's um, lots of ways of doing things on the Mac. Um, and who would like to ask our next question? Oh, I, I, I just had a comment. This is Mary, but sure. Um, just because when I worked at the rehabilitation center, I did work with people who were, you know, having a lot of trouble because they were losing their vision. Sometimes it's hard for people who have always been blind and people who just became blind to really understand each other. But what um, what I would say, just as having taught that before that I would recommend is before you go to trying to dictate everything, if the more time you make yourself learn it with that keyboard, the better off you're gonna be. And then you can kind of treat the dictation as like an add-on instead of the other way around because you're always gonna have more it doesn't feel like it now, but you're always going to have more control from the keyboard mm. than you are. It's just that it's harder at first, especially mm. if you're used to clicking and mousing and clickety, clickety, click. <laughs> um, and it's work. I'm not going to tell you it's not work. It is. And it'll be frustrating, but it'll be worth it in the long run. I hope it's okay to say that. No, thank but you. It, it might not get, all be fun. I and get you're going to have to put it down sometimes. That I'm it's sorry. kind of you have to learn the basics, the fundamentals before you jump into other arenas. So thank you. You just, do. Just yeah. to add to that, you know, I'm an assistive technology instructor, and the, the, it, it's a it, it's hard to let go of that crutch. It's you know um, when I'm when I'm teaching students, you know when when they kind of go with the you know the the, the way that's easier in the moment. It's it's hard to sometimes break that habit because it's easier. Mm. So, yeah, it's it's it, it's 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 definitely work, but it's wor work that's well worth it in the long run because it it'll it'll pay off immensely. Okay, thanks. I need I needed that encouragement because <laughs> I'm stuck in the climbing the mountain. <laughs> You'll get there. You you yeah. will get to the summit and then it's all downhill. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. All right. Do we have anyone who would like to ask our next question? This is Pete. Yes, Pete. I'm uh, curious about what is involved with um, sharing computer audio on a Zoom call using a Mac. Can ah. somebody give me a, a 30 second overview on that? Okay, who would like is to- Is it fairly self-explanatory with the Zoom interface? This is Brad. Yes, Brad. Um, I think it is. It's very similar to if you've ever done it on Windows. It's very, uh, very similar. You have not. Um, no. Well, there's a keyboard command to start it. It's in your end Zoom. You're mm -hmm. in the Zoom user interface in a meeting. You command shift S. You're presented with a dialogue. If you want to 
there's a, a button at the top. By default, you're on the button that says basic. If you want to share computer audio, UVO space bar, and it changes it to uh, advanced. There's three states. There's basic, advanced, and file. And you keep hitting VO space bar, you'll cycle through the three. So mm -hmm. you hit VO space bar once, you're on advance. VO right arrow. You're on, oh, God, what does it call it? Just a second. It calls it, um, see, I do it a million times, but I don't pay attention. List it's sharing just... screen, list box. You interact. And the choices, I have not, I do not understand why the choices are not always the same. But you're looking for the one that says share computer audio. Okay. See, and in the iBug room, it's the second one. But in others that I go in, it's the third one. So I go to share computer audio. Then you can stop interacting. You can <clears throat> either VO all the way to the share computer audio button, but it's the default. So you can also just hit the enter key and the share <clears throat> computer audio will begin. I like sharing computer audio because any sighted people in the room cannot see my desktop. Um, so that's nice. If you are going to share your, your, you know, screen share, share or your desktop where people can see it after you stop, you, you want to stay in that basic tab. <clears throat> after you stop interacting with that uh, share list box, you VO right arrow to where you'll find a checkbook check box that says share computer sound because it is possible to share your screen without sound. So that let's say you're doing your presentation, right. sighted people want to see, mm -hmm. say, a uh, um, a PowerPoint or something like that that doesn't have sound. But most of the time, as we're dealing with blind and vision impaired, right, uh, we are using sound. And I find that share computer audio works really well. Also, I believe it's my opinion. I, I, in some circumstances, obviously sharing audio is going to use less bandwidth because I'm not sharing a video feed. Sure. And I have found times when that does make a difference. It does not make a difference for me because I have really good AT&T fiber internet. I'm good no matter what. But I have found on the other end sometimes not everybody's internet situation is, is created equal. So and some people receiving it may get a better signal if there's no audio. I mean, no video, no, no right. computer share. So, and then when you're done, the same keyboard command you used to start it, command shift S will kill it. And uh, now that will share it. all audio, including voiceover mm -hmm. and yes, it, it shares depends everything. on where your voiceover, if your voiceover is set in yes. the voiceover utility to something mm -hmm. called under sound and it's set to yeah. system Unless you've default. changed it, it, it will, it will change your, it, yes. Unless you've gone to voiceover, uh, voiceover utility and changed your voiceover output. But unless you've done that, you know, sharing your screen will share your voiceover. So you can I to... run any application to generate like uh, music or other audio? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anything on my machine? <clears throat> Pretty much. Yes. Okay. You can play a movie, an audio, and people will hear it. You know. Uh huh. If it's got if it's got video, they will see it. If you do a screen share. If yeah. you have sight and can see it. But yeah, that's how iBug does the Friday night movie. Yeah. But those are MP3 files. There is no video. Gotcha. Thank you. This is Diane. I just wanted yes, to Diane. add. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> Got to get used to these rules. Uh, I just wanted to add that I think, I mean, when I do this, I will plug headphones into my computer so the voiceover is only coming into my headphones and then I think the audio channel of whatever it is you're sharing would not have the voiceover this this is Brad and, yes, and Brad. if and, <clears throat> unless you do excuse me <clears throat> we've got a bit of sore throat unless you have done what Chanel said and change your <clears throat> default output of your voiceover um, everyone will hear it 
So you have to check, go into voiceover utility and you would, if you're using headphones, you would have to change it so that your voiceover is going to come out of uh, the headphones and not the default sound output in order for voiceover. Oh, so you do that in else. voice, I see. Mm, voice okay. over utility, yeah, But yes. beware. At, in um, addition to mm, your sound um, yes. utility and your preferences. Correct. And beware um, Zoom announcements, unless you've turned them off, and I believe... Only the hosts can disable their, um, you know, what? you know. Pete has entered the room. Pete has left the room. Type yeah. announcement. Yeah. Anybody can disable Zoom alerts. Well, when I look through it, it says host only. Do you have to be a host to share computer? Yeah, it audience? depends on how the room is set up. So, depends on the rules if the I can room. just say the alerts say host <clears> only, <throat> that doesn't necessarily mean anything because I. You, I don't hear them even as not a host. If I have them off, they're off. So this is Darcy. Yeah, Darcy. Just to confirm that, yeah, I, I wondered that too. The first time I turned them off, I'm like, I wonder if I even can because it says host only, and I turned them off and they turned off. So I don't know why. Very good. Whether that's a weird glitch in Zoom, whether it's, but mm. it doesn't appear to be the case. So yeah, you can turn them off. Yep. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Yeah. This and is... so just hold on just a sec. Um, so Pete, you don't actually need to go into your sound um preferences in under system preferences. You just right. need to go into your voiceover utility. Video utility. To redirect the uh Yeah, voiceover. you don't go yeah. anywhere else. You just go to your voiceover utility. Well, I'll be doing it on uh iBug on uh sharing some some music so i may hit either or both of you up for some mm -hmm. uh, further That's advice fine. we can do a practice session sure that'd be All great right. and i'm sorry who was uh speaking this is joe yeah joe um are, the first time you do that are, aren't there permissions that you have to yes, oh, yes. i forgot yes. all about that when i was trying to demo sharing because it's been so long so practice do a practice run Zoom is going to make you go to security and privacy and allow, um, God, I can't remember what it all is. I've done it years ago. Yeah. I know you did it the other day, Chanel. It wants you to accessibility. Well, Darcy did. I forgot all about Zoom. it. It's going to want to make you allow to share the microphone and, and some other things. So uh, before you do it, before a group, start your own Zoom room and share it and follow yep. the prompts it will tell you what you need to do yes and you'll do it once you will never have to do it again you'll on forget that about it until and you you'll have... forget all about it and yeah. then one day you'll have a new mac and you're so used to doing it and you'll start to do mm -hmm. something and you will be terribly embarrassed because you realize <laughs> you should have known better <laughs> which is what i did about a year ago when i got the my current macbook pro uh huh. Okay. Yeah. This is Mary. Yes, Mary. Yeah, I, I'll just ask this real quick. You know what my problem was, but where, when you're talking about sharing the screen, um, you're talking about the the sound that you're sharing is also going through the headset, isn't it? It is, but yeah. Okay, that's. So, if, but if you route the voiceover to the headset, it's not supposed to play over the. the Correct. The, okay. This is Darcy. Yes, Darcy. I think it's just one of the sort of peculiarities of Zoom where it's like it will share your default system output. And even though voiceover is still going to your, like, say your headphones are your default system output. But I guess because you've explicitly told VoiceOver, don't use default system input, use the headphones. It, they're, they're different enough. It seems like a weird kind of subtle distinction, but um, because it's not the default input, then VoiceOver won't be part of your part of your audio that you're sharing. Yeah, it's weird that way, but that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I might have a, a bad pair of headphones here. That's what I'm not really sure of. So you're you're essentially saying I'll still be able to hear the music I'm playing you for will. the participants. Oh yes, yes, you'll and, hear everything. Uh, but but I can <clears throat> sw switch it so I don't hear voiceover. Well, or so they don't. They, hear don't the they won't. Hear, you will. You'll hear voiceover. Right. But they That's won't. Right. 
that's also a good thing. Yes. I, I have yeah. a follow-up question sure. on Brad's thing. He went into advanced and uh, checked the checkbox for computer audio. What is the what's what's the difference between sharing computer audio and sharing computer sound? Well, that is computer sound. That's just what Zoom calls it. Share computer audio. Oh, OK. So one is with and under basic. You can find share sound and that's with the screen, this with screen under share, advanced. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. just share your computer audio without your screen. Got it. OK. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep. All right. The things we learned about. Judy? Yes, Judy. Hi. Um, I've been thinking uh, the past couple of days. I've got AirPods. Air. Uh, yeah, Air AirPods that I wear. Um, they're not real new or anything. Um, they have like the little case that that plugs in. Um, but, anyways, um, sometimes. Uh, if I haven't used them, you know, if I haven't used the keyboard, you know, and maybe 10 minutes or something, they turn off and the sound comes out of the Mac. So oh, what I always have to do to reconnect them is I do VO shift O, I guess that's the control panel, VO shift O, and then I um, go over to Bluetooth and then um, mm. I do the actions menu because if you do VO space, you turn Bluetooth off. So I do the actions menu and then it says more details and I go to that and then I can VO left and right to my AirPods where it says toggle on or off. So that's like a pretty long process to get to my, to get to where I toggle them. And I just happened to think when we were talking about keyboard commands earlier, and I don't think I've ever seen it in the keyboard commands but is there a way to make a keyboard command um, that would just toggle my AirPods on or off? This is Brad. Yes, Brad. I'm not sure about making a keyboard command, but I have a utility that I purchased from the Mac App Store. <clears throat> it's called Tooth Fairy. And it will run and you can you can assign a keyboard command to any bluetooth device that's connected to your computer uh, and i mean i'm not worried about things like my magic keyboard or my trackpad or my desktop mac but um <clears throat> what i have done is airpods and i have been able to, to assign and i got more than one kind of airpod i got the regular airpods i got airpod pro and i'm able to assign a keyboard command to <laughs> the um to my AirPods, and I think I found something. Actually, I use Command Option and um, Z because um, they're all right there on the left hand side of my MacBook Pro keyboard. And actually, I have a desktop Mac and I have a MacBook Pro, and I'm able to assign the same keyboard commands on both because I'm not smart enough to remember a whole bunch of different keyboard <laughs> commands. So, um, yeah. and I think I made. Uh, Command uh, option Z for my regular AirPods. Command option Z, Shift Z for my AirPods Pro. Um, and I think I paid, I can't remember, $4.99, maybe $5.99. I can't remember. And of course, because I purchased it, if I go to the Mac App Store, it just says, you know, re-download. It doesn't show me the price because I bought it probably five, four or five years ago. But that has been one of the most useful little utilities huh. I've ever purchased. And it's very, very handy. Wow. Very simple to run. It works great. Runs Thanks. you you set it so these these things are in the menu extras and a mouse user could do it. I even set up on my wife's computer. She's not a voiceover user. So she could just click her mouse on the little icon. But if you go to the menu extra Yes, you can click on it, but it will also give you battery. I have mindset to tell me my battery information right there in the icon in the menu extras area. But a uh, little keyboard, it's called Tooth Fairy. Very useful. I heard about it on um, a David Woodbridge podcast a few years back. It's very nice. Wow. Um, can I ask you a question, Brad? Um, sure. Now, like when I do um, commanders now, 
I just use my option key, you know, and one other key. Do you mm -hmm. always have to use the command when you do it with a tooth fairy? Well, you're talking about a keyboard commander. Um, and these are just keyboard commands that you create within the tooth fairy app. So it can be pretty much whatever you choose to create. Just make sure it doesn't conflict with a pre-existing keyboard command, either in the Mac OS or a well, right. voiceover key, you don't want to do that. Which is why I chose command inside. option because that's not going to be a voiceover command. And then oh. I just I found one that I knew didn't do anything that at least I wasn't aware that it did. I, I have see. not found any conflict with the one I've been using. Oh, huh. cool. Wow, thank you. That's really interesting. Thanks so much. Definitely. Yeah. Great question, Judy. And I think I had Brad do a demo of that program about a year we ago. Or that so. once upon a time. Oh, oh, I'll have to check that out. Tall. Yep. Huh. This this is Julie. Yes, Julie. Um, I lost my internet a little while ago, completely shut off. So maybe you guys already talked about this, but I, I've heard you guys mention a VO key. I don't know what that is. All right, who would like to tell Julie what our VO keys are, what they do, and all that good this stuff? This is Darcy. Yes, Darcy. Well, if you're a voiceover user, there's a lot of commands that are specific to voiceover, and they are prefixed by what they call the VO key. And it, in most instances, it's holding down control and option and something else, like... Oh. And but you but the reason that people refer to it as well the VO key also for for simplicity but also you could change that to the caps lock key if you didn't want to use control option and some people use v, some people use control option some people use the caps lock key um, you can actually have it be both and you can go back and forth if you want to but yeah when people say VO like people might say VO L or something and it means you hold down whatever VO keys you've set and then the letter L. This is Pete. Yes, Pete. Julie, are you a JAWS user by any chance? No, no. I have some sight. So I use a keyboard. Huh. I use a mouse, um, but I can't read the screen. So I'm trying. I'd like to be able to turn voiceover on to read stuff on the key uh, on the screen mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. So I have yeah. to find screen a way reader, to... Right. Screen readers. In fact, all screen readers that I'm aware of use what is called a modifier key. Yep. Uh, in JAWS, which is, you know, the, the most popular and most expensive, I, I believe. For, I, don't, uh, I don't have JAWS at all. I don't yeah. use Yeah, but there's okay. a, a specific key that you press that makes your keys on your keyboard act differently. And it generates, oh. usually generates or activates something to do with the screen reader feature, which is your voice output. So oh. these are just two keys that, that are unique to the Mac uh, yes. Voice have you over. Voice over before? Have you is used voiceover at all? Excuse me, this is Julie again. Is there a key that I can I can use to to get screen reader to come on and off? This is Darcy. Yes, Darcy. Yeah, what you want to do the first time you want to you turn on voiceover, you do Command and F five, and that will turn on voiceover. Um, now, the first time you turn it on, you listen. There'll be a, a prompt that comes up that will tell will ask you if you want to learn how to use voiceover there's a key you can press and there's a tutorial that's actually really good that you should go awesome. through yes. and it will teach you kind of the basics on how to use voiceover and like what the vo key is and just how to do very basic things but it's a really good thing that you should you should do um the first time you want to use voiceover okay and that's with the apple smart i have the keyboard uh, smart keyboard i think they call that magic keyboard whatever yeah. it is apple yep oh, okay okay are you julie um, is... are you using a mac then yes yes okay. i have the m1 mac mini and i okay. did recently buy uh, the keyboard with the full size keyboard that i plug in it's apple's uh yep. what is the magic right. keyboard to call it yeah i got mm -hmm. that and so i'm you know i just need i can see stuff but i can't read the screen and so and the mm -hmm. print is so small on that computer. I have to try to increase. I use um well, if it's a Mac Mini, it doesn't command. have any. <laughs> I do the command and the plus sign to increase the font somewhat. Right. 
you might want to look on in addition to voiceover there is a there is a screen enlargement thing in in the mac called zoom not to mm -hmm. be confused with the thing that we're talking on right now um but there's a thing called zoom and it it might meet your needs depending on what your vision situation there's actually a lot of different um accessibility tools built into the mac depending on what your particular vision needs are like you I might can't, yeah i can't read stuff i have macular degeneration my central vision shot right right so there the zoom might work for you um there are situations where um you can just have it like you know read specific pieces of text instead of using like full-on voiceover um but there's a lot of different different things and it's, it's i'm totally blind so it's, this is outside wow. of my area but um there are a lot of different tools and 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 sometimes you can use them in conjunction with each other so you may find there are situations where you want to still use your vision but then other situations where you want to use voiceover so there's there's a lot of there's a lot of options available to you right you know built right into the into the mac okay Definitely. so it's not an app it, it's something built in it, to... it's built right in it comes oh. with every mac all these accessibility features are, are built right in. oh zoom okay yes. okay i'll check into it thank you all right great oh, yes Can janet oh so <laughs> let's see i think janet wanted to say something before so go ahead janet sure. and we'll go back to diane um, I was gonna tell Julie that she could also I don't know, don't remember how to do it, but she can also go um have her hints turned on where it says VO shift or VO command control to get used to um keyboard using help voiceover. Right. Your keyboard help. help yeah, keyboard help. And right. my other thing was, I was I was going to say that the app I was um, talking about earlier was uh, Pandora. Okay, well, I will let you, um, but I'll see. So let's get back to, I think, Diane. Thanks, Janet. Um, yes, I was just going to add um, one of the things I do when using voiceover, and this is also for Julie. Um, so I will have voiceover on when I want it to read my document. Uh, if, there, if it gets to a certain point where I want to add a new paragraph or something, then I will stop it. I'll turn voiceover off. And again, I'm just using the, the command F5 keys, which I've put bump dots on. <laughs> so I can just turn it on and off pretty quickly by trying to find these bump dots. And then I, I'll type without voiceover on because I find it distracting to my thought process sometimes to be hearing what I'm typing. Um, and then I'll go back up and then listen to it again. So I, I'm often in a document um, turning voiceover, toggling it off and on. And you can do that pretty simply with just the two keys. And I don't know if that would help you or not, but I just wanted to pass that on. Diane, do you have any vision at all? Or when you turn off voiceover, you're just going without anything? Do you? Um, I, well, I have a teeny tiny bit. I okay. don't know that it's helping well, me. Okay, well, I, the reason- It's I, almost all gone. It's the going. The reason I ask is you actually can, and you may already know this, so, so forgive me, mm -hmm. but you can change the keyboard options so that you don't hear every letter as you type it. You could either have it just say each word as you hit the space bar or just say nothing at all. So oh, you might, it's, it's, you it's might find that easier words. than turning voiceover off, you know? Oh, um, you, well, some, I see. Okay. Yeah, you might find that easier because some people, yeah, I don't mind the, the, the keys it talking to me when I type, but then I've, you know, used it my whole life that way. But even, oh. even a lot of other blind people don't like it speaking while they type so it's 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 definitely a, a personal preference but you definitely can change that to whatever you want in voiceover so you don't have to cycle it on and off all the time oh okay thank you this is brad <laughs> yes brad uh, i find it uh i have mindset for keys and words but i find that in most cases i'm able to type faster than voiceover is able to yeah. say the keys as i type right. Right. So when I type slow, I'm able to hear it. But if I'm typing at my normal speed, I don't hear it. All I ever hear is the word that I just typed when I hit the space bar. And if the word doesn't sound right, I'm like, uh oh, let me go back and check that, you know, because believe it or not, occasionally I do make a mistake. So and if the word doesn't sound right, I'll go check it. And I know that <laughs> I did something figure. wrong. 
imagine that. <laughs> it happens once or twice a year. Never. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but I I, anyway, so yeah, you could time. do that. And and like I said, if you, you know, if and I'm not any lightning typer by any means, but I, I mean, I just find that a normal typing speed, you're probably going to type faster than it going to say each where each key you type. It is pretty easy. I I toggle some of those things all, all the time, like, and you can just hold use your vo key that's control and option or caps lock at voiceover set to use um both by default and i most yeah. of the time i use caps lock but you can press vo v and then you can write arrow until it says typing echo or type and then you can ch oh that just set my smart device off and then it can change you can down arrow or up arrow to change it to words or characters or nothing so there you go kathy i have a question yes kathy all right. You know, I'm in your beginning class. Yep. <laughs> so uh, I am afraid to delete the garbage because I have not really put anything in my Mac. And what if I delete garbage and it's something really that the computer needs? What is supposed to be not, what things should not be erased? Like, I'm just afraid to delete garbage. This is Darcy. Yes, Darcy. Yeah. Deleting stuff, you can't break it. You can't. Oh. Um, it, it used to, this used to not be the case because I, I have made some mistakes early on, but the it's very much kind of protected. Like, you can't really delete system files. And if you try to delete something that's really important, it what will it's warn like, you Are first. you sure? Are you sure? And I'd say, oh, yeah. no, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. But you can, but you can feel pretty, pretty confident that, you know, mm -hmm. when you put something in the trash, if it's not something that's supposed to go there, um, it won't let you put it there. And, you know, maybe maybe what you could do is I if you're worried about it. I've put nothing in trash. It, I've put her, nothing in there. Oh, well, then. then. So it might be from my previous owner. See, my Mac is on its second life with a blind person because um, the screen uh, doesn't work. <laughs> well, you could, um, depending on it, you, there may not be anything in your trash anyway if you're using a, a different account, but it doesn't yeah, hurt to, to empty it. And it may even be set to empty uh, by default if, you know, there's so much in the trash anyway, um, it gets rid of that. But you, that's not something you need to worry about. That's not, okay. um, it's not something you need to to, to be fearful of because um, it won't let you, it won't let you make you know, do really make really bad decisions and yeah. You know. Okay. All right. Well, this is I'll Pete. do it tomorrow. Thank you. Awesome. This is Pete. Yes, Pete. Um, but have you ever deleted an email? Me? At all? Yeah. Uh, hmm. No. <laughs> or, or a, I don't know if you're use what you're doing on your Mac if you're using your messages app, but if you've deleted anything, like or just. No. You've never deleted anything. So your mail app must be getting pretty full if you're using well, mail. I'm, you know what? I am still just playing around. I'm, I'm not doing oh, anything okay. serious because I'm I'm behind the, in the class. I'm not where you you guys are. I mean, I, I want, I'm listening to all the lessons and catching up and everything, but I'm probably behind you guys. And um, I have some health issues that, does not prevent me to work every day. The thing I would say, and I'm sure Chanel probably covers this in her lessons, is you don't need to be to be scared of it. It's not going to let you. It's not going to let you break it. Okay. Um, it's not. <laughs> there's a lot of things put in place to make sure you don't break it. Okay. Um, and you can even see what's in your trash before you. You know, if you go delete it, um, your trash is right in your dock, and. Um, once you open it in there, it'll show the files and. But see, um, I don't know what they mean. I mean, that's my problem right there. Well, if you don't know, then you know it's either stuff that is somebody else there from before, somebody else, or it's not important. And and like Darcy said, it, your Mac is going <clears> to <throat> it won't let you delete anything. You're not supposed important. to delete. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I I've been thinking about this, and I thought, mm, well, this is a pretty good question. <laughs> It is a good question. You know, the, all questions are good. Yeah, what, is it, what is it? They say the only bad question is the one that's not asked. The dumb, yeah, well, the only dumb question so now is the I one that isn't Now asked. I can rest assured tonight that tomorrow I can, like, empty that trash. Yes. There you go. Oh, somebody said, did I cut somebody off? 
I might have. I'm sorry if I did. No, I don't think you did. It was calling me. All right. Um, excellent question, though. So does anyone else have something? This is something? Brad. Yes, Brad. There's a funny story. Uh, several okay. years ago when my father was still alive, I, <clears throat> he was having me do something on his Mac. And I looked at its trash and it had like five or six thousand items in his trash. Oh and I my said, goodness. And I said, dude, do you not ever <laughs> empty this? He says, no. I didn't know. You know, he had never done. So I said, he didn't know it's in here. It's been in here for years. So I did the uh, command shift delete key to delete his trash. It took hours to delete oh, no. everything that was in his <laughs> trash. And after I did it, he commented that, man, this machine's working so much faster. <laughs> I wouldn't wonder. <laughs> oh. This is Pete. Okay, Brad, were you finishing? That's it. Or... That's it. Okay, go ahead, Pete. Uh, um, hey, Brad. Yeah. It's dad. It's not dude. Well, <laughs> sometimes it is. <laughs> Depends. <clears throat> Just some real basic maintenance can help a computer. This is Brad. And, and, and on the voiceover thing, uh, my son is fully sighted, yet he learned to use voiceover when he was in grad school because he would have lots and lots of lengthy <clears throat> scientific articles to read. Oh, wow. And he learned to set voiceover at a, well, he, he worked it up a little faster, but when he really had to pay attention, he said it so, but he would use voiceover and would have it read his materials to him. So that he, because mm -hmm. he said he would cover it. He would, he, it wasn't as tedious as reading it with his huh. eyes. So it's a very, it's a, believe it or not, there are, you know, That's... many, many people have discovered. He discovered it because I had it. His, his yeah, friends would say, really what cool. is that? What are you using? And <laughs> he would explain, oh, I learned my dad. He's, you know, <laughs> I learned it from my dad. So, Well, That's somebody awesome. asked on the uh, iBug Buzz, I know it's not a Mac issue, Chanel, but last night, what the value or the purpose of, what is it, the speak screen on the mm -hmm. iPhone? Is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, if I'm not mistaken, most, I would think most people that would use it would be sighted people. Yeah, yeah speak think, screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that. Yeah, I think that's a situation where if you want to occasionally maybe read some text, like what Brad was talking about, mm -hmm. but your vision's fine. You just want to give your eyes a break. Yeah. Um, like if and you're there actually in are some. Or in your commute or something, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to listen to an article features. while you're driving? Yeah. So let's try to have one at a time. Oh, Go ahead, Darcy. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm done. I was just going to say there actually are some features in the Mac that are are sort of that same deal. Like, and they've yeah. been there like way before Voiceover. Like, if if say you're in a an app like Text Edit, um, under the ed if you have like the some edit. text selected, you can have it speak that. Yep. So it's and and yeah, so it's it's one of those things. <clears throat> I think it's it's one of the great things about having accessibility built into to things is that even people who wouldn't normally use it might have a use for it sometimes, and. You know, it's, it's, it's great that, that it's there because like somebody like that isn't going to buy a screen reader, you know, they're just not, but, but mm -hmm. if it's built in and it's, it's there for them, then, then they might have uses for it sometimes. Yeah. This is Jill. Okay. Um, <laughs> Diane, go ahead. Uh, yes. Just real quickly. I thank you for saying that I have a, one of my daughters is in grad school, so I'm going to pass that on to her about the voiceover. Um, mm -hmm. My question was, how can I change the voice of voiceover? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Who would like to tell Diane how this to is Herbie. Okay, go ahead, Herbie. So there are a couple of ways. Um, you can do a lot of the <laughs> preset voices that voiceover has by going to the, I forget the exact name of it, but you get to it by doing VO command left and right arrow speech to get rotor. speech rotor. Okay. Yep. 
I just know what it does. I never think of the exact name. But anyway, you can adjust various options in there from rate, pitch, all that. And one of them is voices. And I will mention that with Ventura, you do get, um, I don't know if it's all the eloquence voices, but quite a bit in there and quite a few that you did not bargain for either, such as bad news, which is really bad news. I don't know how you can <laughs> understand the screen with that. Novelty voices, yeah. But yeah, they have a lot of novelty voices in there, as well as, you know, the Siri voices. If that is not enough, if you need additional voices, then yes, you can go under the speech category in the voiceover utility, which you can get to by hitting VOF8. I don't know if there's a certain individual on here that um, I told them to go to the voiceover utility and I found out later on they went to system preferences. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, you can get to voiceover utility through system preferences. Don't get me wrong, but um, it depends if you want to take the long way around or take a convenient shortcut. So anyway, needless to say, I'm upset about that, but you know, I'll get over it in a few years. So you go to speech and you'll see a table of voices and then there's an option for adding languages and voices and you can download additional voices. That way I'm not on the Mac so I can't really uh, dis demo it or anything like that, but. Um, but yeah, your easiest way is probably to press the VO command shift and then the left and right arrows right, yes. to get that to your. Called, that is what? called the voice attributes. Rotor. Speech attributes rotor. Yep. Speech attributes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Speech yeah. attributes. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. You just you use the voice of awesome. the method <laughs> if the voice you want is not in that rotor. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And just a warning with the new Ventura, your voices are going to be a lot. Like my 80% rate was way faster than mine when 80% normally is on this Mac. So they've definitely done something weird with the voices. Um, mm -hmm. I think somebody else was also wanting to speak at the same time as Diane and I can't remember. Yeah, this is Julie. I was gonna ask a question here. Sure. You said command F5 would turn voiceover on, right? Right. How would I turn it off? Same, same thing. thing. Same oh. Thing. Oh, okay. Do I? Ha I don't have to go into settings to have that work like that. Nope. No. Oh, thank you. Okay. That way, out of the box. Yep. Okay. Thank this you. Is, and this is Herbie. Yes, Herbie. Just a real quick thing, in case you forget the command F five. Well, two things: if you have a touch bar, and not an external keyboard, then it's command, and then the um, triple tapping the uh, triple clicking the uh, the the power button. Touch ID center. Touch ID sensor slash power button slash yeah, same, yeah. Thing. same thing. They both do the same thing. Well, they don't do but the same thing. A lot of people don't realize it. A lot of people don't realize that because on the Max with touch <clears throat> with touch bar, they introduced that when you open the lid, it automatically turns on. Right. Oh, that's the, true. Unless you figured out how to turn that off to a. I have not, and because and that. The, you know, at the same token, you can also press a button and that also turns it on, which has always made me nervous when I want to clean off the keyboard. Yeah, well, um, there's a terminal command, but it's not easy. I don't even remember it. I can okay. get to work. All right. I've never played in terminal, so I won't comment. I will say it comes in handy on the Windows side because you do not get the startup sound in boot camp. So I like it for that side more than I like it for the Mac side. But I um, think we've kind of drifted a far oh, from yes, the question. A little this. bit. Um, the other um, thing I was going to mention with voiceover, I actually had something else to say, is if you forget that, just like on the iPhone, you can always ask Siri to turn it on and off. So there you go. This is Mary again. Yes, Mary. Uh, this is more like a question or maybe something that we could think about. I'm kind of noticing that a lot of people come on some of us come on and we're voiceover users or we're blind and you know we know we're blind and we've been that way a while but it seems to me like there's getting to be more and more of a need for people who need to transition and figure out what level of vision that you know like walk through the process right. some people really need to use voiceover but they don't understand you know anything about it some people don't know how much or what kind of use they're going to be out of able to get out of the vision if any 
are there resources for people to figure those things out? Because it seems like there's more and more people with me you know, macular degeneration and stuff. That's a good question. Um, I think resources. they need different resources than people um, like me. This is yeah. So Darcy, go ahead and. Well, I was just going to say I, I haven't been here for a little while, but I know Apple's accessibility website. Um, I believe has all the like different like they they you know they break it down in terms of different disabilities and stuff, and they kind of tell you what you need. So that might be a good starting point. Um, I know there's a book you can get for iOS that covers all the different um, things, different dis um, accessibility tools, but I don't know if there's something similar for the Mac or not. But I would mm. I would say the Apple.com website is probably your best starting spot. Actually, I, this is Janet. I think yeah, Chanel. Yeah. I think Chanel mentioned in her um, referencing at the end of her lesson that there is a book you can get from. I can't remember where it's from. That. Oh, there's the National Braille Press, but that's very much mm -hmm. focused on using voiceover. Yeah, um, there's Shelley's book, Darcy. That's what I, see. That's what I was thinking. But but Shelley's book is for iOS. Um, well, but it's, but it might. But it's see, all I, the accessibility I, I, features. Yeah, you can you can probably get a lot. That's at iosaccessbook.com and she sells it. I think it's twenty or twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. and it's um it's a book. It's by Shelley Brisbane. It's a, it's a book that you can get that, that you can get an ebook, and it's all about the different accessibility features in in iOS. And a lot of what's there, you know, what's in iOS is also on the Mac, but it's just not specifically tailored for the Mac. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's got to be hard because if you have, you know, your your vision is is diminishing. You know, there there are certain situations where you know maybe you want large print, maybe you want invert colors, maybe you want any <laughs> number of things. Um, and and for a lot of us who are who are at, well, I I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I know for me, yeah, someone who's always been totally blind, that's completely yeah, outside too. my area. Me too. <laughs> I know I'd like to be able to help, but I don't know how or if i really could this yeah is, go ahead brad i was gonna say i spent many many years as a uh, supervisor and lead trainer in the at department at the dallas lighthouse for the blind and we dealt with lots of adults of <clears throat> different ages who were uh experiencing vision loss and were new new to it all you know um uh, and we, <clears throat> I started out teaching the screen magnification, the Zoom text and magic stuff. And before I myself transitioned to a screen reader user, but there were all kinds of different people who were beginning their vision impairment journey. And we would teach them all kinds of different computer related skills to learn. You know, I, I used to wish, God, I wish narrator existed like it is now uh the mac was wonderful because every now and then i would get a mac person and they were flabbergasted to find out that everything they needed was right there already in their mac they didn't have to spend a dime that was fantastic to show them stuff like that same thing with an iphone somebody would have had a iphone that somebody gave them and or they'd used it before and then they're having trouble and they can't see it then to show them what's already in this iphone they're familiar with so it was you know it was very rewarding to to help people figure out you know tools that you know they in many cases they already had that would help them you know access things that they're having trouble accessing um, this is Janet. Um, back in the day when you went through the Center for the Blind, they used to blindfold you so you'd be you'd be blind. Mm -hmm. Some During places the day when do you went that. Through, when you um, went through training. Yeah, some there's different philosophies on, you know, how to accustom people to vision loss and what, you know, should you use your vision and all that. But we're just here to help people get the tools they need. Unfortunately, I don't really know about all those low vision features but i'm so glad that the mac has them and um hopefully you can go to the apple site i know that apple this as well they do focus a lot on voiceover but there are definitely still some low vision uh, users on there and uh, there's there are resources out there so thanks everyone for coming tonight i was just checking our time and i think we're yeah, we're about at the end. So we will see you next month for Mac and Talk. Um, 
the fourth Tuesday, I think, is the 20th. The 20th I can't remember. 22nd. 22nd. Okay. Tuesday Great. before Thanksgiving. Yep. Wow, <laughs> that time already. All right. Well, thanks for being here, everyone. And we will talk Chanel. see you next. Yes. Thank you. you just, I, I, came in, I came in a little late. So could you just review again? like how to get stay connected with you guys. Yeah, like, go to our website or Facebook. Yep, yep. ibugtoday.org. Um that's the and then you can register for a free account and you'll get announcements of all of our upcoming events. And the Mac and Talk link is also on that site if you want to join our Mac and Talk list, but ibugtoday.org, that's the website to go to. Great. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. It's a great, been a great. Yes. All right. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Good night, everyone. I'm ending the meeting.